Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. So today's video is going to be another Q&A. Hopefully I can get this up. <laughs> before the end of January. I'm cutting it a little bit close and filming this with only a few days to go. Well, I guess a whole week. But yeah, you guys left me some questions on my community tab. I did a post yesterday and on Facebook I did a post as well. So if you're not already following me on Facebook and in my Facebook group, which is a private Facebook group where we can chat and you can ask questions and whatnot, Make sure to head over there and check it out. But anyways, let's get into it. I always say I'm gonna try and do these questions sort of rapid fire so I can get through as many as possible because you guys left me a lot of questions, but uh, I end up dragging each question out and taking a lot longer to answer than <laughs> I mean to. We'll see how we go. I have a bunch saved on my phone, so I'm gonna answer these ones. What I will say though, is a bunch of you guys asked me questions about things I already have videos on. For example, William asked me why his blood sugar before bed was between 75 and 99, and then in the morning it was above 100. I have a video on that about why you might have high blood sugar on keto and why it's not as scary as you might think. So that was one thing. There was another question I already answered. How do you recover from a cheat meal? At the start of the year, at the start of this month, I posted a whole video on how to get back on track after the holidays. Someone asked about how I ended up in Australia and where I'm from. I did an old Q&A talking about that. Quick answer to that is I'm from Canada. I've lived in Australia for five years. I moved here for my ex-boyfriend. We're no longer together, <laughs> but I love Australia and I love Adelaide specifically and the Adelaide Hills even more specifically. So I decided to stay when we broke up. I ended up buying a house here last year. So here's my house. <laughs> and yeah, this, this is my home now. I am actually going back to Canada in a couple of weeks. I posted about this briefly on my Instagram story just a quick video of me showing my Australian winter coats I was packing and saying that they are absolutely not gonna cut it in Toronto right now because the weather has been absolutely freezing. I think when I looked at the weather yesterday, it was like minus 17, but felt like minus 23 and they have had an insane amount of snow. <laughs> I haven't been back for a Toronto winter in probably five or six years, so I haven't seen snow that whole time, and I hate the cold. I hate the snow. I love the heat, so that's gonna be fun. But no, I'm excited to go back and see my family. I guess I'll just address this really quickly, and then we'll get into the questions, but ugh. I don't know, I posted that on my story that I was going back to Toronto and then I was having so many people message me and just wanting to talk about it and asking if how long I was going back for and whatnot. Unfortunately, I'm not going back under the best circumstances. My grandma got really sick at the end of December and was told she would have three to six months to live. So I was trying to get back in time to see her again. Then she declined really, really quickly and ended up passing away a couple of weeks ago and I'm not gonna cry right now. <laughs> so yeah, I was trying to get back in time to see her again. <sighs> but wasn't fast enough, so I'm just gonna go and spend some time with my family. Anyways, yeah, I've just been getting a lot of people replying to those stories asking why I'm going back and this and that, and I've just had to repeat <laughs> that a whole bunch of times, and ah, oh, why did I do this? And I'd just rather not <laughs> repeat it a hundred times because I know it's gonna hit me a thousand times worse when I get back. <sighs> Anyways, just wanted to say that, not looking for sympathy or anything, I just 
yesterday was getting a little bit upset having to like I hate not answering people but at the same time I'm like oh it's my fault for posting on my stories that I was going back I hate not answering people I try to answer as many messages as I can and especially people who message me all the time but it was just getting it was just upsetting having to repeat that it wasn't actually exciting that I'm going home <laughs> or going back to my old home I guess this is my home that's my home I don't even know Anyways, wow, wow, this <laughs> this got a little bit depressing. Just wanted to say that. Um, how did we get here? I was just trying to say that I have a whole bunch of videos that answer a lot of questions that you guys ask me, especially when I get questions a lot. I always make videos on them. Yeah, so if I don't answer your question in this video, just have a quick search on my channel. I might already have a video on it. And I am gonna try to get through as many questions as I can, but we'll see how quickly I can do that. All right, let's get into it. Travis asked, my question is keto. Being unwell, but planning to start in about a week. What to expect? Easiest way to get into it before getting too funky with different recipes. Okay, so the easiest way to get into it is to dive headfirst in Get rid of everything in your house that is super processed. Get rid of any potato chips. Get rid of any like granola bars, any refined carbs, anything that you're not gonna be eating on your new diet that might tempt you, get it out of the house. Once you've done that, go to the grocery store, stock up on foods that are low in carbs and try to focus mainly on whole foods. Now I have other videos on my channel that are shopping lists and lists of keto foods and low carb foods and insulin resistance foods. I will link one of those videos up above. But the way you wanna go about building your meals is start with a protein source and then from there add fat for cooking. So let's say your protein source is eggs, then add some butter, some ghee, some avocado oil to cook it in, then add some non-starchy vegetables and some low sugar fruit. So that might look like mushrooms. Mushrooms aren't technically <laughs> a vegetable, but we'll just throw them in there. Maybe like you wanna do some zucchini and then maybe some avocado, which is a low sugar fruit. And so that's gonna be protein, fat, and then non-starchy vegetables. And if you can just use that template to build all of your meals, it's going to make things so much easier. So another example of this would be a steak. You're gonna cook that in ghee or tallow, and then you're gonna have some asparagus on the side. Or another example would be a burger bowl. So you're gonna make burger patties out of ground beef. You're going to put that on a bed of lettuce, add maybe a slice of tomato, add a mayo that's made out of good fats so not with vegetable oil but with avocado oil instead and you can also make this yourself add maybe some avocado and that's your meal just make sure you're getting enough protein at each meal make sure you're using a decent amount of fat in order for your meal to be filling and then add non-starchy vegetables and low sugar fruits for just variety and texture and to make your meal more enjoyable. <laughs> the other thing I will say is electrolytes. So, so important at the start because when you first switch to a low carb diet, well, first off, if you're cutting out all processed food, you're gonna be getting a lot less sodium, but sodium is actually an essential electrolyte. So if you're getting a lot less, Combined with the fact that when you eat low carbs, your body stores less carbs, and when it stores less carbs, it stores less water. So you're gonna lose a lot of water weight right off the bat, but this also means you're gonna lose a lot of sodium. So it's important to be using a lot of salt, adding salt to your water. You shouldn't be drinking, I mean, you can drink plain water, but I find a lot of people do best when they just add like half a teaspoon per liter of water, or you can use an electrolyte supplement. I recommend Sodi. I will link that in the description box down below. And Sodi just tastes a little bit better than just salt water on its own. Plus it has a little bit of potassium and magnesium, which can also be good. So those would be my tips. Toss out anything that you're not gonna be eating on your new lifestyle. Focus on whole foods, center your meals around protein and then make sure you're getting enough electrolytes because a lot of the symptoms of the keto flu, 
stem from not getting enough electrolytes. So if you can make sure those are in check, then you're gonna be golden. Beth asked, how to utilize keto in the best way possible for improving skin conditions? So when it comes to skin conditions, a lot of them are caused by autoimmunity and the body sort of attacking itself. So if you can cut out anything in your diet that is gonna be possibly inflammatory, this is gonna be the best way to combat skin issues. So I recommend doing an elimination diet and just keeping track of the foods you're eating and how they're impacting your skin. So one example of a healthy keto food that might not be serving you would be nuts. A lot of nuts are really high in omega-6, which is inflammatory. They also generally contain a lot of anti-nutrients, which can be triggering for some people, especially when it comes to things like psoriasis and eczema. So try cutting these out for a time and see how your body responds. Some people are also sensitive to oxalates, which can be things such as spinach is really high in oxalates, and I think tomatoes are. You can look up lists of foods that are high in oxalates and try eliminating those, and just really try to pinpoint what is triggering your skin issues and your skin condition, because it's not gonna be the same for everyone. Unfortunately, dairy can be a trigger for some people, so that might be worthwhile. Cutting out the cheese, even though I know that is a keto favorite. But then again, that might not be triggering it, and you might be totally fine consuming it. Rebecca asked, my husband has the hardest time getting into ketosis. I, on the other hand, can get into ketosis super fast. Why is that? All right, there's a couple different things to think about here. First off, how are you measuring ketones? because urine and using the ketone strips isn't always the most accurate way. Basically, when you first start keto, your body starts creating ketones and creating more than you need. And this is why people will get really high ketone readings on their urine strips because their body's producing so much, but it's not able to use it, so it's being excreted. And then that shows up as a very high reading. But as you become more fat adapted and your body starts to figure out how many ketones it actually needs, then your readings will get less and less. And this can be really discouraging for some people when in reality, it's actually a good thing. It just means your body is adjusting and getting used to how much, how many ketones it needs to make. And the next thing I would ask is, this is really interesting, People who are sedentary tend to have higher ketone readings than people who are really active. And I think, again, this just kind of comes down to your body creating the right amount for you. And for, yeah, I don't know exactly why this is actually, but a lot of athletes who eat a keto diet actually have really low ketone readings, which is really interesting, despite the fact that they might be doing a whole workout fasted and obviously they're burning fat and their ketone readings are still low. Now, I tend to think that tracking ketones isn't accurate. You can tell if you're burning fat or burning carbs. If you are hungry in between meals, if you can't go three to four hours without eating, if you get hangry if you haven't eaten for a while, these are all signs that you are not in ketosis. But if you wake up in the morning and you are able to go a couple hours before having your first meal, if you have consistent energy through the day, then you're burning fat and you're in ketosis, despite what your readings might say. So I would say don't focus so much on ketones and the specific readings you're getting, but focus more on the results and how your body's feeling. Chrissy asked, trying to coach a few friends of mine to go low carb, what's the best playlist you recommend for them to get started. So I did a Keto for Beginners playlist, five videos at the start of last year, and I will put the link to that up above. Yeah, that's just five videos that pretty much goes over everything you need. On top of that, I would also recommend my Keto Start program. This course is a seven day crash course for starting keto, and it's only $25, it's super affordable. This course, I've tried to condense everything you need to know in as few words as possible. You get a shopping list, you get a sample meal plan, you get a meal building guide. I've had really, really good feedback on this course. Through it, you'll also get access to a private Facebook group where you can ask questions and myself and my assistant coach, Alicia, 
will answer your questions and offer you support. So I recommend that as well. I literally created it for people to get started and to make it as simple as possible to get started. So that would be where I would direct anyone. But yeah, the playlist that I linked above, that would also be a good place to start. Okay, Compact Girl asked, why do I get super sleepy after I eat and how to prevent it? She has three questions. I'll start with that one. So if you're getting sleepy after you're eating, that's probably a sign that you are experiencing reactive hypoglycemia, which is when your blood sugar drops after you eat. Now, usually what happens is you're eating a meal that is high in carbs and high in refined carbs, especially your blood sugar is spiking really high and then it's dropping down further than it needs to. This is basically because your body is making too much insulin in preparation, you have too much insulin in your system. And this is one of the early signs that you are insulin resistant. So I would ask what meals are you eating that are making you sleepy afterwards? If you are eating a low carb meal that is higher in protein and fat and you're becoming sleepy, that's probably a sign that you haven't become fat adapted yet. So you might just need to push through until you become more fat adapted. The next question was, can you show me a plate of realistic food, no frozen food of what a keto lunch or dinner should look like? So we already talked about this. The focus should be protein and then add some fat until satiety and then add non-starchy vegetables and low sugar fruit. Again, in my Keto Start course that I just mentioned, I do have a complete meal building guide that kind of breaks this down into the exact portion sizes and how you can put together a meal according to your goals. So highly recommend that. But beyond that, I have a ton of what I eat in a day videos on my channel. I also have a bunch of meal plan videos also on my channel. So I will link to one of those up above and you can check it out. And her third question was, I'll stop eating sugary stuff for a while, but then after a three day, after three days or a week, I'll crash and eat nothing but sugary stuff. Does my body want sugar when I'm trying not to have it? Why does my body want sugar when I'm trying not to have it? Oh, and then at the end she said she was diabetic. All right, well that makes sense. So yeah, you are experiencing reactive hypoglycemia, it sounds like. So I would really try to focus on protein and fat. If you are doing well without sugar for a couple of days, but then you're having really intense sugar cravings, you're probably not eating enough during your meals and probably not enough protein, especially. Guys, if you just eat enough protein, you will not be hungry in between your meals. It is crazy how much protein sati sa I cannot say that with my braces. <laughs> oh my God, I cannot say that with my braces. It is crazy how much protein satiates, and there we go, us. There's something known as the protein leverage hypothesis, which basically states that you're gonna continue to be hungry until you meet your protein goals. So this is why we can eat endless amounts of foods that are refined carbs and fat. So something like French fries, you know, when you're full after a meal, but you can just keep eating those French fries, it's because you're not getting any protein with them. So you're just not getting sati satiated. Wow, that is a hard word to say, apparently. Oh my God, satiated. Okay, well, <laughs> there we go. Maybe I should talk a little slower. I don't know. I'm just gonna blame it on my braces. Yeah, if you're having sugar cravings and going on these big sugar binges, you're probably not eating enough and then your body is just craving energy and sugar is the fastest source of energy that we can consume. Based mom asked, sorry if too personal, but do you ever struggle with body image issues? And if so, what do you find helps you deal with them? I feel like even at my peak fitness, I'm always finding something wrong with myself. And now that I'm pregnant, it's only amplified. Yes, <laughs> I feel like this is something that everyone struggles with, women especially. I don't know, I don't really talk about it because I don't think I struggle with it too badly. I mean, I can definitely tell when I've put on a bit of weight and when I'm not where I feel most comfortable, if that makes sense. But then at the same time, I look back on photos when I was super fit and cycling like hundreds of kilometers every week. And I wanted to lose weight at those times. And there are some photos where I am like, 
the skinniest I have ever been. And I look at those and I'm like, oh my God, how did I want to lose even more weight? I have no muscle on me. And it's definitely a good thing that I weigh more than I did then. But yeah, you always have those thoughts in the back of your mind. We've been conditioned to think that the skinnier we are, the better. And we've been conditioned to put a lot of our worth into our weight, unfortunately. I mean, I just did a video on reasons why you might have gained weight overnight. And I think that a big part of the problem is that we are constantly weighing ourselves. A lot of people weigh themselves every single day. I have definitely been guilty of this. And our weight can fluctuate for so many different reasons. And looking at the scale every single day can be super, super discouraging. In that video, I talk about how at certain times of the month for women, we just retain more water and the scale goes up. And I think that just knowing that there are things that are just out of our control, there are things that are normal for our bodies that aren't a bad thing, but that might mean the scale goes up. And when we see that, we don't really understand it a lot of the time and we're like wow I ate the exact same thing I always do yesterday and I've gained five pounds like and we immediately feel worse about ourselves we think we look bad even though no one else can notice and we probably wouldn't have even noticed if we didn't weigh ourselves so I think getting rid of the scale best thing you can do beyond that I would say focus more on what your body can do you said you're at your peak fitness, or I guess you were at your peak fitness at one point. Focus more on what you're achieving with your body. Like you're lifting more weight, you're gaining more muscle, you... <laughs> there is so much your body can do that is so amazing. Just being able to walk, go for a hike, go for a run, things like that. Some people can't even do that. So I think just appreciating your body and focusing more on what your body can do versus what you look like really helps. Anytime I get kind of upset and feel like I don't look my best, that's definitely something that I think about. I think about all the ways that I am fit and all the amazing things my body can do and that really helps. I don't know if this is helpful. I mean, I don't usually talk about like body image issues and whatnot. In general, I'm not a very open person, but I feel like I've been trying to push that in at least the last couple of years and be more open and YouTube has especially helped with that. But there are definitely still topics that I'm kind of like, <sighs> I don't know. I just feel uncomfortable talking about. This is probably one of them, but then again, if it's uncomfortable, you should do it and push yourself out of your comfort zone. I cannot speak on the pregnancy thing though, as I have not been through that. I know that can be difficult for a lot of women, but kind of on the same train of thought, you are growing a human inside of you. That is absolutely incredible. And if you think about how many women nowadays are struggling with infertility and how many women just wish they could become pregnant, you are incredible. Your body is incredible. I think focusing more on growing a healthy baby rather than focusing on your body can help. Obviously easier said than done. Uh, I don't know if I'm helping. I don't know if this is good advice, but hopefully there was something you can take away from that. Vanessa asked, people say it's important to not under eat. What is the average calorie count that would not be considered under eating? All right, this is so individual, but at the end of the day, it comes down to listening to your body. You know when you are not eating enough, when you go to bed and you are hungry and you can't sleep, when you are tired all the time, when you're cold all the time. These are all signs that you're under eating and your metabolism has slowed down. If you were eating, very little food and your goal is weight loss and you're not losing weight, that's another sign that your metabolism has slowed down because you're not eating enough. And I know some people will be like, oh, this isn't a thing, your metabolism's slowing down, but it absolutely is. Because think of it like this, your body is used to you giving it enough calories, enough energy in order to keep your heart beating, in order 
to keep your lungs working, your digestion working, all of this stuff. And then as soon as you cut way down on calories, your body is kind of like, oh no, we're not getting enough. We need to stop some of the functions that we don't absolutely need. We need to conserve energy because we're not getting enough. I should say this is when you cut calories for a long period of time. That's why I don't think calorie restriction is a good approach for weight loss because you're not fueling your body properly and your body realizes <laughs> Yeah, short term, you can get away with it. Long term, that's when you're gonna start experiencing things like being cold all the time, hair loss. And this is because your body's like, okay, I don't have enough energy to do everything, so what things can I cut down on and not focus on? Obviously, things like your heart beating are priorities, keeping you breathing, that's a priority, but regulating your body temperature, maybe not as important. Yeah, so these are all signs that you're not eating enough. When you get in tune with your body, you will realize if you're feeling energized every single day eating what you're eating, then you're probably eating enough. Okay, Marvel asked, what's your view on kale slash spinach shakes? If pro shakes, do you have a go-to recipe? I am not pro kale and spinach shakes. <laughs> these two plants especially are two of the worst ones you can consume because they're high in anti-nutrients. The nutrients that are in them, your body cannot use because they are bound to these anti-nutrients. So all the iron in spinach, yeah, your body can't use it. Honestly, very little nutrition. Otherwise, maybe some vitamin C, maybe a few other nutrients, but no, I am not a fan of shakes in general. It's better to eat your calories in terms of satiety and uh, yeah, I am not pro shake. I mean, there's certain situations where it's appropriate. When I had my jaw surgery and I couldn't eat any solid food, I was having a lot of shakes from a company called Health Code. Highly recommend if you need to go on a liquid diet at any time, but in general, yeah better to eat your calories and you're not gonna be getting much from a kale and spinach smoothie. It's not offering you much, so not a fan. <laughs> On that same note, I think there was another question about celery juice and let me find it. Sylvia asked, what is the best time to have celery juice and how often is it okay to have? Again, I don't think this is gonna be beneficial. I know celery juice had its big hype and whatnot, but Honestly, again, maybe a bit of vitamin C, that's all. Maybe a bit of placebo. <laughs> Not much else going on there. Okay, I'll answer one more question from Mike, just because he said, I hope I'm not too late, and I, I'm gonna feel guilty if I don't answer this one. Okay, this one was really long. My question regards omega-6 concerns with seeds and nuts. Ever since I started keto, these have been touted as healthy sources of fats and nutrients. I found out nuts have anti-nutrients and enzymes that limit their bioavailability and need to be soaked or dry roasted. Then I watched numerous videos on omega-6. Is the problem just highly processed seeds, nut oils, or with the seeds and nuts themselves? I've talked about this on my channel before. I think if you're eating nuts as whole foods, they're not gonna be an issue. Yes, some nuts like almonds are really high in omega-6, which can be inflammatory. So I think if you're having a lot of almond meal, if you're making like keto bread every day and keto treats and whatnot, this is going to hurt you more than it's gonna help you. This is gonna cause inflammation. Once in a while, those things, totally fine. But I think it's just the high quantities that cause problems. Yeah, that would be my answer. If you're eating nuts, in whole form and not eating them in crazy high quantities, then you're probably not gonna have any issues. And especially, the reason that the omega-6 and omega-3 ratio matters is because they're both converted through the same pathway. So the type of omega-3 that is in nuts is ALA, which needs to be converted to EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are the final form of the nutrient and they are the ones that all of the benefits you hear about omega-3s come from. So for your brain health, for inflammation, for skin health, these all come from DHA and EPA. ALA, unless it's converted, is just treated like any other fat by the body and just used by energy <laughs> and just used for energy or stored. 
So when we consume too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3, then that small amount of omega-3 we get doesn't get converted and isn't really beneficial. So that's why the ratio is important. But if you are eating omega-3 in its already converted form, so seafood, for example, has DHA and EPA already, then the ratio is less of a concern. Even still, too much omega-6 is gonna be inflammatory, but as long as you have a good source of omega-3, whether that be tinned fish, sardines, mackerel, herring, salmon, all great options, fresh salmon as well, or fresh any of those fish, any other seafood, lobster, oysters, these are all good sources of omega-3 fatty acids. These are all good sources of EPA and DHA. So in that situation, the ratio doesn't matter as much. Okay, one more question because I just filmed another video for my vlog channel where I was reading funny and just weird and mean comments. And then I realized I had a screenshot that was meant for my Q&A video in my comments video section. So I'm gonna answer this one from Mindy in Oregon. She said, how have you been doing? Do you have a close circle of people, friends, or family that you can go to there in Australia? I worried about that after your surgery and all. You might not have someone to help care for you. You are brave and independent. Do you plan on dating soon or do you have a new boyfriend? I know it's personal, but you did say anything. Okay, so we'll get a little personal here. I do have some really good friends here in Australia. And honestly, they have been so so key in my life in the last year. Like all of 2021, I don't think I would have made it through <laughs> without my one best friend in particular and also her partner, like absolute best. I do have a few other really good friends as well who were very important, but this one friend in particular, like, uh, you know people who are just the best and you know you can go to them with anything or like, anything you need, they will do it. This is her. So, okay, so first of all, I'll just say, I know her from high school back in Canada and she ended up moving to Adelaide a couple years after I did because she met someone who is her current partner who was from Adelaide, they met in Canada. And so she ended up moving here. And I think that was like six months before the pandemic started. And yeah, so I've known her a really, really long time. And like I said, just the best person ever. And the last year, especially like I went through a breakup. I had all this other stuff going on. She has just been so, so good. Like when I first went through my breakup, I stayed at her house for a week, brought the cats there and everything, even though her and her partner are not big cat people. And like, that was just so good. I stayed with her after my surgery and, <laughs> Again, her and him were just like such good nurses, switching my ice packs all the time and whatnot. Yeah, there's been a few other times the past year that obviously they were the best. So she's number one. I do have a few other really close friends who have also just been really, really good. I don't have any family here, unfortunately. Yeah, that's just what it is. But I will say that my ex-partner's family has been really, really great to me. I still catch up with his mom every couple of weeks and we're still close and I'm still close with some of his other family members as well. So I do have people I can go to. Don't worry about me, I'm okay. Although I do really appreciate it. Do I have a new boyfriend or am I gonna start dating? <sighs> Guys, the dating scene here, Adelaide is too small. Too small. I have been trying to date. I Here's my thing. I'm an introvert. I don't go out drinking. I don't go out and do anything like that. I work from home. I study from home. I do everything in my house. Every single one of my friends is in a relationship. So I really like don't know how to meet people except for these stupid dating apps. <laughs> and I go through waves like, oh, I mean, yeah, like I've dated people here and there, but nothing, nothing promising. And a few have gone, uh, just been like much more trouble than they were worth. And oh God. And then everyone knows everyone. You follow someone on Instagram and they know people you know, 
or I've literally went out with two different guys who ended up like being neighbors, but they didn't even know each other. I did some like detective work to figure out they were neighbors. And I'm like, how can you, like I swear there's a million people in Adelaide. How does everyone know everyone? And I know that's like the whole meme, Adelaide's so tiny, but man, it is true. So yeah, no new boyfriend. Go through waves with these dating apps. I'll like talk to some people, go on some dates, and then just get so drained and tired with it. <sighs> Cause you're just having the same conversations over and over again. Usually about me being Canadian. That seems to be what everyone's interested in and whatnot. But yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of going with it. Like I said, I don't know how to meet anyone else. <laughs> uh, someone I was talking to, they're like, oh, like I'm sure you can meet someone at the gym. I'm like, how would you, like I cannot even fathom going up to a random stranger and starting a conversation like that. Like, <laughs> uh, but anyways, just wanted to answer that one last question and give you a little bit of a personal answer, I guess. Sorry, it's not very exciting. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I think I've already talked for way too long. Thank you so much for watching. I'm very sorry if I didn't get to your question. I've done Q and A's and live stream Q and A's on and off for a while for my channel members, but I think I'm gonna start doing the Q and A's more consistently again. And so my channel members, I always will answer every single question that you have. If you're not a channel member, you might've seen people in the comment section who have like a little egg emoji or like a little bacon emoji next to their name. These are channel members and their comments get highlighted to me. So I try to answer every single question they have in the comment section. And yeah, like I said, I'm gonna try to do Q and A specific for my members. That way I can just prioritize the questions or maybe I'll just prioritize members questions in these Q and A's. One or the other, I'm gonna figure it out. But right now it's only $1 to join as a member or there's a higher tier, I think it's $5 to join. So I will put the link to that up above or actually there's just a join button down below somewhere. <laughs> you can click that and become a channel member. That just helps to support me a little bit more because YouTube revenue is up and down. And in January, it is down, oh my God. <laughs> it's crazy how much it drops because all of the money they have budgeted for the year they use in December. So AdSense, pretty good in December. And then come January, it's like cut in half. Not complaining, still not bad, but it's just like you do the same amount of work and you make <laughs> half the money, <laughs> which is a little bit discouraging. But if you're a channel member, more of that goes to me. YouTube still does get a pretty big cut, but okay, not complaining, not complaining. Just saying if I couldn't get to your question, I'm trying to find a way that I can prioritize members' questions. All right, I think I've rambled enough. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my December Q&A, which you can check out here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you want to check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.